afternoon again, guys. Um, I've been watching uh, Charlie Max last few videos where he's working on a Tamiya bike. Uh, he's mentioned a few times <clears throat> how great a kit that it is. And uh, again, I agree with 100%. They're awesome kits. And uh, like Charlie said, if you haven't if you haven't built one yet, I would highly recommend to uh, give one a try. Um, but anyways, I'm in the process here of trying to organize my own kits a bit. And I just thought I'd do a quick video just showing the uh, Tamiya bike kits that I have in my stash. <clears throat> uh, just in case there's a particular bike or something that you guys are, one you guys might be looking for. And uh, just not aware that it's released as a kit. So these are all sport bikes. I don't have any street bikes. So the first one is this uh, Yamaha. This is the Spain's livery. This is the uh, Ninja the H2R. This is the uh, turbocharged. Bike. So this bike you can get two versions, the race version that I have here, or you can get the street version of this. Also the street version also comes as a kit. I have another Yamaha. This is the exact same bike as the Spain, Spain number one bike. Um, just a different, just a different livery, but uh, I think they're the exact same kit. This one is actually my favorite bike, not just kit, but in real life. Ducati, it's the Panigale S. Um, one thing you will notice on a, a lot of these bikes, sport bikes often come with this large extension here, license plate. I know here, I know here in Canada and likely in the US as well, and I guess probably other places, but oftentimes this is the first thing that gets removed from these bikes. You can buy kits that'll tuck the plate underneath so you don't have this big plate hanging down in the back. Um, so it's pretty common, usually anybody here that buys a sports bike, that is what they do. They'll take this away first thing. Also remove the signal lights and as well tuck those underneath. Um, so that's a, that's a modification I'm hoping to actually make to this when I build it. Uh, this one is another Ninja. This is an older version. Uh, not sure how many cc's this one is. But again, sport. I think maybe this might be the one that Charlie's building. I'm actually not 100% sure. If it's a cowie that he's building or not. Anyways, it's another one. This one here is the newest one that I bought. This is a new release. It's the Honda Fireblade CBR 1000. Uh, same deal. You can see the license plate holder here. Again, we like to have them tucked back underneath the seat. To me, one that I have it says Repsol Honda. I think this one is going to be uh, probably the biggest challenge on this one is going to be painting. So they're all sport bikes. Two that I have there are street versions. All the rest of them are track versions. I do have this other bike kit, one twelve. It's a Fujimi kit. And uh, it's also a race bike. I'm not sure what the livery is on this. I'm not sure if it's even a real livery. It could be from some Japanese anime or something. I don't know. But this is uh, also a Kawasaki. Um, 
as well. I think uh, looking at the decals here, <clears throat> it has all the decals for the green. You basically painted purple and decal it. Uh, I have looked in the box and just looking at the parts, it does look to at least as far as detail and crispness of the mold goes, it does look to be on par with the Tamiya. Uh, but I haven't built one yet, so I don't know how they go together. So it says here that it's bike 11, but I've only seen one other Fujimi bike, and it's the essentially it's the exact same bike, different decals, but it's the same Kawasaki ZX10. So I do plan to do an open box on this, uh, just basically to show you guys that, again, just looking at the box, looking at the parts, it does look to be on par with a Tamiya kit. I was planning to build this kit for a, a group build in the last year or the year before and something came up I had to back out but I had already taken this out once to build and yeah maybe next time I do a bike maybe this will be the one that I'll do. So uh, anyways guys it's just um, a quick look at the stash of bike kits that I have. Uh, there's tons more that I want, but uh, as Charlie said, they can be expensive if you buy them here in North America. I buy pretty much buy all of mine from Hobby Link Japan, uh, just because the prices are so much better. Uh, the shipping is no more expensive than having something shipped from the U.S. And prior to COVID, uh, packages from HLJ used to get here in Canada. Uh, well, I would get them here in Newfoundland uh, in about five business days. So it's very quick. They would be here in Canada in two days, but it would take another three days to get them from uh, Ontario down here to Newfoundland. Since the COVID pandemic, it now takes about, I think the last package I got from there took about three weeks. The one before that took five weeks. So hopefully it'll get it back down. To the five days again but yeah just to let you know that buying from japan doesn't necessarily mean you'll pay a fortune in shipping i don't know what it is to ship to the us but i know to ship here to canada it's uh, on par with shipping within canada or even shipping from the us so it's not really that much more expensive and uh, the money that you save on the kit itself more than makes up for a shipping cost it's quite a quite a difference if you're if you go on Hobby Link Japan and you buy a MPC kit or a Revell kit or something, you will pay more. But for the Asian stuff, Ming, Dragon, Tamiya, Fujimi, whatever, they are a fair, fair amount cheaper. And they also have a lot of sales on a lot of times, so uh, just something to keep in mind. Anyways, guys, enough of me rambling. So, uh, as always, thanks for watching and I uh, hope you stay tuned.